Things have gotten so bad for MAGA Republicans' baseless witch hunt against President Biden that the Grand Inquisitor himself, James Comer, seems to be publicly conceding defeat. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at in this video, but as a recap, here is the situation. Republicans took the House majority in January 2023. And that entire time, rather than governing responsibly or working bipartisanly with Democrats and Republicans in the other chamber and Democrats in the House, they've instead dedicated all their efforts, all their political capital, into impeaching President Biden. And the reason for this is because Donald Trump, privately and publicly, right, he's made no bones about it, he's been very open, he wants Biden impeached in retaliation for Trump's own impeachments, the two impeachments for the Ukraine call and then for January 6th, both of which were completely merited. But Trump wants to blur the lines between him and Biden ahead of the 2024 election. And because Republicans are too stupid and cowardly to tell Trump no, they've spent more than a year in this elaborate fishing expedition, right? And they have nothing to show for it. Their nets do not have fish. It, they have the political equivalent of like an old leather boot. And it's just been one L after another, right? You may remember that the most recent damning defeat for Republicans is that the guy at the heart of their allegations, a guy named Alexander Smirnov, who alleged to have heard the evidence that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden were paid $5 million by a Ukrainian energy company apiece to influence foreign policy for Hunter Biden. Well, it turns out that that guy lied to the FBI when he made those allegations, and he was arrested by the Justice Department. And according to Jim Jordan, one of the other grand inquisitors or high inquisitors, whatever the ranking system is, those, that guy's allegations were at the heart. It was the most important piece of evidence at the heart of this matter. And that was reported. And it was already, uh, the impeachment effort was already stuttering at that point, right? So I definitely want to play this clip here in just a second of James Comer. You can just see the defeat on his face. This guy's having a really terrible, I don't know, quarter. But before I do, I want to remind you that there's still some Republicans out there just engaging in public cope, right? Even after the their you know star informant their star whistleblower was arrested for making false statements this is republican congressman mike turner trying to keep the dream of impeaching president biden alive now you voted to support this impeachment inquiry do you think it's responsible to continue this inquiry given these charges against this fbi informant Absolutely. I mean, this is, is this inquiry, and it is an inquiry, uh, is based upon actual bank records, documents, uh, transactions of money, large sums of money. Uh, and doing an inquiry as to uh, you know, how these funds got to the Biden family uh, from international sources, China, Russia, uh, Ukraine, uh, th that is certainly an issue that, that Congress needs to take up, and I think the investigation will continue. So again, you can just see it, right? He, he, they're constantly moving the goalposts. They're like large sums of money for the Biden family. Well, Joe Biden is not legally responsible for any amount of money that his family receives from domestic or foreign entities unless you have proof that he was involved and proof that he did something corrupt, which they don't, but they're blurring the lines. They're like, we should be able to impeach Joe Biden for things, for money that his family members receive, like some sort of like vicarious responsibility. And then of course he talks about being paid by foreign powers when we know Donald Trump as president, as president, received more than $5 million from China. Mike Turner doesn't care about that. And so on and so forth. The hypocrisy is truly astounding. But again, James Comer, the Grand Inquisitor, uh, you can just see it and hear it in his voice. After this news broke, he is clearly no longer nearly as confident as he used to be about the prospects of impeaching the president. As chair of the Oversight Committee, Comer is leading an investigation into President Joe Biden and his family's business dealings. I think the conference will get to see what happens with this Mayorkas impeach, impeachment in the Senate and how serious the Senate treats that as to whether or not we impeach Joe Biden over here or we just focus on holding him accountable. Comer's months-long probe has not produced any evidence that Joe Biden has benefited from his son Hunter's business activities. The president has called the inquiry a, quote, 
baseless political stunt that even Republicans in Congress admit is not supported by facts. Comer says he expects the committee will soon have a report. But no matter what happens in the House, he concedes the Senate won't convict. The accountability, I hope, will come this year. But it may come next year with a new president, a new attorney general. At the end of the day, my goal is to get the truth out there and hold people accountable for wrongdoing. That may encompass impeachment. If it doesn't, that's fine with me. If it doesn't, that's fine with me. The guy who based his entire reputation, credibility, his media significance on impeaching the president. And the guy who said, I think we should vote for impeachment now. And he said that in summer of 2023, right? Now he's saying, well, impeachment doesn't matter. Of course, part of the reason why he's saying this isn't just, again, the one defeat after another, but also the votes, right? Tom Suozzi, a Democrat, reclaimed a seat that was previously occupied by a Republican in New York, George Santos. George Santos was expelled from Congress. A special election was held. Suozzi, a Democrat, won. And that razor-thin Republican majority that is ever shrinking just got a little bit smaller. And 18 current Republicans... Uh, represent districts won by President Biden. So it is very probable, very likely, that even if Comer wanted to impeach, forget the Senate, it's very likely that they wouldn't get the votes to impeach President Biden. So the whole thing is just an absolute disgrace. Comer and all those who participated, including, by the way, Mike Turner, deserve nothing but your utter and absolute contempt. Last thing I want to draw your attention to, it's fun reading is Jamie Raskin, who is uh, the Democratic ranking member of James Comer's House Oversight Committee hearing. Vastly better debater, vastly more intelligent, vastly more educated, a constitutional scholar, and also really witty. So there was a guy named Tony Bobulinski, who, again, was another star Republican witness, the guy who was going to bring the kill shot against President Biden's you know, political career. They've said that a gazillion times in reference to a gazillion other witnesses. I digress. That guy was finally interviewed. Again, no smoking gun whatsoever. And after Jamie Raskin, you know, just ruthlessly debunked uh, Tony Bobolinsky's testimony, um, you know, Tony Bobolinsky's attorney fired back that uh, Jamie Raskin engaged in grotesque mischaracterization. And Raskin, in, resp- in return, excuse me, in response, wrote this letter. And it's just a, an intricate, you know, predictably, characteristically Raskin break down and debunk line after line after line of the various lies and overstatements and, you know, all these things that were made by Tony Bobolinsky. Definitely recommend that you check it out. Uh, It's just a ruthless debunk of Republicans' latest great witness against Joe Biden. You should definitely check it out. But that's where we are. You know, definitely if they do impeach President Biden, it's not going to go anywhere. They probably don't have the votes to impeach anyway, let alone convict. But I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to just drag this out, hoping that they can extract some sort of political consequence in what is otherwise a relatively tight race between President Biden and Donald Trump. So to Republicans, probably any little, you know, bit of momentary political advantage counts. And so they're probably just going to try to keep this on in their back pocket as much as possible. I would be surprised if they actually do the right thing and end the impeachment inquiry. But you never know. Let me know what you think in the comments.